Hey guys, World Eater here. Today we're going to be finally going through Ancient Odyssey. Now I know a lot of you have been waiting and I'm so so sorry for taking so long on this. I have been going through a lot of stuff IRL and you guys also have to remember that I am a free to play account. Now the thing with this free to play account is I do need some time to actually craft certain familiars in a free to play style which is what's taking so long. So once I'm done with one of these last familiars that I'm doing, I'll be able to progress much faster. But mind you, I do wait at least once a month for the bit gore. So if you guys are wondering where the videos are, um, just know that I am working on them and I'm not just forgetting about y'all. I do apologize for the wait, but now that I went ahead and went over that, let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and show you what I have for gear. Now all of this is not needed, of course. And I did swap from bait to tank, and I'll tell you why in a second, and it's probably only going to be for a little while. Um, I did a full Flame Warden set, and the only reason why I did a full set is because I got lucky and got the fourth piece. I was only going to do a three-piece set because the X-Store, it's okay. It's, it's, it's not the greatest thing in the world. It's nice to have because it's when you enter a battle, so every time I see a new familiar and I enter that battle, I'll deal damage to the closest enemy and gain that amount as shielded when I enter it. So the cool thing about that is it's the first thing that procs in the battle and it's unavoidable. So it's automatic free damage and it automatically shields me up, which is really, really nice. Now the three piece bonus is what I was really going for. Barrier, chance to end the attacker's turn when you get hit. Now what that means is if someone hits you with dual strike or they have a attack closest four times, then pretty much what happens is it pretty much stops the attack. So you're going to be hit with a dual strike on the first hit of that dual strike it gets cancelled it cancels out the rest of the attack it'll cancel out the dual strike hit which is the secondary hit and it will also cancel any brain slash pet procs that come afterwards as well it ends the attacker's turn which means nothing else can be done no shields no heals nothing that is it the only time you get the heal is if it's a drain so that is very very strong against a lot of a lot of uh, familiars that have dual strike in their kit or very strong pet procs. Now for the four out of four bonus, I really wasn't going for it, but I was lucky enough to get it without even trying. I got um, the extra 10% evade chance and the 10% fire resistance, which in my opinion is not needed. 10% evade is not that great. Is it good to have? Yes, of course, but is it needed? Of course not. Now for my last two pieces, I just was lucky enough to drop the ring and the main hand for Icarus while I was just farming invasion and I was like you know what I'll use it I had epics replacing this and then I realized I had enough materials to get these to plus three and I was like I'll go ahead and do that so I'm using Icarus you can of course use a three-piece flame warden with three legendaries you can use a max set of um of manticore if you were able to do manticore i unfortunately was not strong enough to do manticore i have token saved and i kind of wanted to but when i tested it i was not able to do manticore unfortunately so if you guys have manticore that's a fabulous fabulous set you would be in the bait slot and you would have eularis as your tank still or any other tank that you did have prior and that would be great you could try with epics and just the three piece or you don't even have to have a set i believe if you're dps so long as you have a decent accessory pet and a bunch of really good runes and enchants i also do have a 1.9 deflect chance mount which you guys saw previously but i did roll another mount which was a perfect block mount with a lot of heals which is amazing or a lot of heals a lot of hp which is amazing so that's going to be my next mount that i'm going to bring up just in case i want to lean towards block later on if i get a better block set but for right now i am still utilizing deflect a little more so i'm pretty happy with my two options we're going to go ahead and go on to the flag now to see what we have to do Kalakmul, 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 whatever clear Kalakmul of all enemies we're going to be getting rune fragments major revive potion and 10k gold if we check out the loot box here you see that it is tier 13 gear the best stuff to get here would probably be the bleak simum schematic and the ancient tokens along with the skeleton key and the sprocket you also need this one blee max for this bleak simum schematic to make them and these are all very sick cosmetics if you do get them 
I highly recommend farming this area a little bit to get some of this stuff. I personally really love this main hand as a cosmetic. It is great. Let's go ahead and go in. And as you see here, I already have a new member of the team. Now, don't be alarmed because they aren't even maxed out yet. And I'm going to show you that you can still use Familas that aren't maxed to pass some flags, okay? So, we have Drazig. I'll go ahead and go over Drazig one more time. 30% base crit, 15% base empower. Now, I have for the skeletal lining, first attack on an opponent has 16.8% increased chance to be empowered. For the brain, I have three options, but right now I'm using this one, which is a 42% chance to attack enemy team for 1,200 to 1,800 when you hit an enemy, which is great. Let me show you my other two options. I have a mythic brain, which will get me up to, I believe, 66%, but it's for spread heal and spread shield when I hit an enemy. I want a little more of an offensive approach, but if I do need a defensive approach, I will be swapping to that one. For my other offensive approach, I do have this one, which is 7% chance to attack weakest enemy when you hit an enemy. I believe the other ones are different. This is when I get hit, return, yeah. So I'm going to be utilizing the attack enemy team brain for now. If I have to switch it up, I probably will. I might have to use that spread heal, spread shield brain once in a while, but for now I'm gonna be using this approach. For the heal chip, I have gain increased damage the higher your target's health percentage is, up to a maximum of 6.6%. I don't have that many chip options, sadly, so this is what I have to use and work with. And for the pumps, I have two empower chance, um, 111.4, 110.8, and a perfect 12% dual strike. So that's going to be adding a decent amount of empower to what I already had. I believe it's going to be adding around 22 empower. To what I had already so that's great I should be around 37 ish 38 and then that 12% dual strike will be nice if I can proc it so I can have a higher chance of hitting my 42% chance attack enemy team brain for a lattice unfortunately I only have a plus two a lattice I really wanted to have a plus three for this video but unfortunately it did take a little longer than expected to farm a lattice and I wasn't able to complete a lattice just yet. I will have to go back and finish farming them. I have all the familiars, I just need the raid materials, which does take time being as item find does not affect raid materials. It is just a timely manner kind of farm. <laughs> it kind of is unfortunate, but it's all right. This is still well worth it. For a lattice, I have a while below 25% health. Heals received are 34.5% more effective. Now, the reason why I have this and not redirect on them is because if you have redirect on a lattice, you got to remember they don't have damage reduction and block chance. They have evade. So if they don't evade, they're taking the full damage. Not to mention in their skills, I'll show you real quick. They have a spread heal and a spread shield as well as a drain. I'm not entirely sure if Drain affects um, heals received, but I'll look into that and I'll tell you guys later in another video when I do figure it out. But that will be helping me with sustain if I just keep using my zero SPs to keep myself alive. So it's very, very nice. Especially with my Tobert. My Tobert will be helping that out as well. For the brain, I have the Mythic Brain from uh, Eulerius swapped over here, which is a 33% chance to shield team for 1,100 to 1,600 when you get hit. Now the reason why I have this one and I pretty much took it from Eulerius is because since it's a mythic, it has a higher percentage chance. So I'm using that because if I would have used the epic that I have over here, as you can see, it would only be a measly 19.5. So I figured it'd be a smarter move to just change to the mythic shield self, or sorry, uh, shield team brain. That way I can have a higher percentage. Now for my chip, I always recommend heal power for a lattice, so I'm going to do heal power on lattice. And for the pumps, I have evade across the board around 5%, uh, 5 once 5.1, 2 or 5.7, giving me around, I'd say, an extra 16, 17 evade, making me at 46 or 47% evade, which is very good seeing as the cap is 75%. So now that all of that is finally out of the way, we're going to go ahead and proceed with me up front, Drazig in the middle, and Aladdis in the back. Now I am going to change something when I do get into the map, which is going to be putting redirect chance on myself. Go ahead and put redirect. Now right now I have the core rune, but I think redirect will be a little better. 
since my Aladdis is not up to par yet. Let's go and see what we got. So this guy looks super cool. This guy, oh, we have two new guys. We have Chalk. Chalk base kit is 5% electric damage. They deal electric damage to the closest enemy. And they deal electric damage to the furthest enemy and Shock. Let's go ahead and check out the next familiar, which is going to be Netotilis. I'm just going to call him Tillies. Tillies here has 7.5 base electric damage. And for their kit, as you can see here, they are a little faster. So they are definitely a DPS. Um, they deal electric damage to the closest enemy and shock, which is very scary. They deal electric damage to the furthest enemy and closest enemy. So they're going to be poking out the tank and bait for sure. Deals electric damage to a random enemy two times. Now that is very deadly. We're going to have to take out Tillis very, very fast. So I recommend focusing Tillis for right now and then going to the Chalks since Tillis has way more speed. Let's go ahead and continue. So it seems here like we're doing fairly good. We do have a lot of TS. Now, for a high, I highly recommend always using shields with a lattice until you're max and then focusing on heals unless you are very low. So I'm going to use my target to target out the back end. Very, very nice. We one shot him pretty much. And yeah, we're pretty much going to fill up here. See if there's any new familiars after this one. If not, we'll be autoing. Okay, so far so good. We're going through nothing. Newbies over here. Maybe this guy might have someone new. Okay, it looks like the same familiars. I'm going to auto. I'm going to go ahead and auto the rest of this dungeon until we come across something new or get to the end. All right, that honestly was a very easy flag. Let's go ahead and proceed on. Let's check out flag two now. Flag two. So flag two is find and defeat yum cax. <laughs> yum cax? Okay. Uh, we have ancient fragments, epic material, five of them, which is pretty nice, and 10k gold. Let's go ahead and enter. Anything new here? Doesn't seem like it. We can finally get mud here, which is great. For some reason you couldn't get mud in the last one. Let's check this out. It's going to be the same team comp. I know they were attacking furthest a lot, but their zero SPs were closest. So they will be hitting the closest a lot more. And I do have barrier. So this looks like the newer familiar here. Let's check them out. Wow, they already attacked the back end. I wonder why. That's crazy. It must be very fast. So we saw Chalk, and here is Yumcax. We have 7.5 electric resistance. As base kit, as you can see here, they are also leaning towards a faster familiar, but their skills scream healer. The problem is they do target out weakest, so this is going to be very hard on your bait. So my Aladdis is going to be getting hit by furthest and by weakest a lot in these flags. They have spread heal teammates, and they have a heal target teammate as well. So Yumcax is not really a problem but they will be nuking out your bait. So depending on who you're going against, you might have to take them out first, only because your bait might just get nuked out by them. So let's go ahead and check this out. We're gonna try going manual. I'm gonna have to heal myself here. Save my SP. I wanna see how hard these guys hit very quick. I'm gonna keep shielding myself. And it seems like they're not really doing too much damage, so. I'm going to go ahead and auto on to the rest of this until we get to the boss familiar. Rum bum bum. Leave this land now, you squeaky little fungus. <laughs> okay, so he's all alone. You guys should not have a problem, especially since he only has one damage dealing attack. If he is healing too much, Try using a more offensive approach like offensive brains or offensive pets if you do have them. And if you are still struggling, another tip would be to just use all damage abilities. Don't sustain. Try to have full health when coming in and a decent amount of SP and just nuke them out with damage. So let's just go ahead and auto on because I'm pretty sure we can. Awesome. Okay. So honestly, guys, so far, the first two flags are a cakewalk, especially with the team comp I have now. If you guys are still rocking some of the older familiars and you're having some problems, you might want to consider looking into some new familiars. 
I know a lot of people still rock more linen shrimps around this time. You do have to look into getting a bait type familiar. There are plenty of them out there. Let's go ahead and check out the third flag here, which is going to be Ayanta, Ayanta, Alanta. Defeat all the enemies in Alanta. It's going to be giving us some elemental fragments, 40 Mount Guts, hallelujah, we love seeing those. And we also got 10K gold coming our way. Anything new here? They took mud away for some reason, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and enter. We're gonna be using the same team comp because it's been working for us. Go ahead and accept. Now, another thing here is if you guys do not have any bait familiars, you cannot run double tank. So, Eulerius, Eulerius, and then the DPS in the middle is a bad idea because of this guy right here. This guy will be nuking out your DPS. So, you got to make sure that if you do have a DPS that's there, you have a lot of redirect chance on those two tanks. You can have double Eulerius with you in the middle as DPS, so long as they have redirect. You should be fine, just make sure you have enough sustain in some way to keep yourself alive. Now I'm going to go ahead and auto through this dungeon and I'll see you guys at the end. Alright, fairly easy flag, was able to auto on through. Again, I do have a lot of TS. Now we are going to be going on to the first dungeon which is going to be find and defeat Itzana. It's going to give us one stat points and a hundred gems, which is amazing. Get those hundred gems. Let's check out the box. We got mud back again, and it seems like everything else is the same. Go ahead and go on through. Now I can go ahead and use my carries here, which I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and go with our carry. Go with that. Fine. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and auto on through this dungeon, and I'll see you at the boss. Puma, what you doing here? You wanna cross to the desert? Well, first you better gift me a nice pair of socks with your head in them. Okay, let's check him out. Oh no! <laughs> well, we'll check him out here in just a second. So, sorry about that. <laughs> Sometimes it just gets cleared too fast. I always forget to turn off auto on the first one every time. It never fails. But that should be nearing the end of the dungeon soon enough. I believe this is the last familiar. Once we get past it, I'll go ahead and show you guys what they do. Okay, let's go to town. There's our rewards, as you see here, we passed it. Let's go ahead and check out the familiar. I believe it's, it's Anna was the name. Okay, it's Anna. It's Anna seems like a, hmm. They seem kind of like a tanky sort of familiar. Their speed is fairly low and they have high damage. It deals electric damage and drains from the closest to enemies. That's a very awesome looking ability. That's pretty cool. They come with 10% electric resistance. So I'm guessing there's some kind of tank or bait. Um, they shield self as well. They deal electric damage to the weakest enemy and shock, which is very gnarly. That's a really cool looking ability as well. And they also deal electric damage to target enemy two times. Now this is a very, very crazy looking familiar. Kind of hybrid based, very nice. Um, I do recommend taking this guy out as fast as possible just by looking at their move set. They will be the highest priority and then it would probably be that other familiar, the DPS rare familiar that does target the back a lot. Other than that, you would want to target this guy out right away. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and go on to the fourth flag, which is going to be Balam Tun. Defeat all the enemies in Balamton. You're going to be getting 50 rune fragments, one major healing potion, and 10k gold. Is there anything new here? We do have a mythic scam for Kimu Saba. We have Sakregur schematic. And we have Flambe. <laughs> I cannot say those words. Um, but anyways, yeah, we do have those here. Everything else seems pretty similar. Um, these schematics seem pretty good, honestly. 
They're not needed for free to plays in my opinion, so don't trip about these at all. If you wanted them, you could always come back to one of the dungeons and farm them. So right now, we're just gonna go through, we're gonna have the same team comp and see what we have here. Let's go ahead and check it out. So we have this new guy, he looks pretty cool. I like his little helmet. Okay, oh, I love this background. So let's check this guy out first. Altepec. They deal water damage to closest two enemies. So they hit two people in front. We might have to move a lattice to second. Deals water damage to target enemy. And deals water damage and freeze all enemies. That is pretty strong for a rare familiar. They have a very great move set. Go and check this guy out before we decide to move a lattice. We have weakest enemy and freeze, which is not too good for a lattice. We have heal self. And we have deals water damage and drain from the furthest enemy two times. So they do have a furthest enemy. So right now we'll just be focusing on leaving the team comp the way it is. Otherwise they're just going to be getting nuked out too many times if we switch them around. I believe we're in the safest spot. So let's go ahead and try manually real quick to see if we can handle this. As you see here, their closest two enemies is already kicking in and hitting our Drazig. So let's actually try moving a lattice. Let's try that out. I think it might be a little better. So we might struggle here just a little bit because these familiars are a little nutty. But after seeing everything going on, it doesn't seem like it. We might be okay. Everything seems fine so far. Go ahead and continue. A little risky going into all these new flags. It's kind of scary. Let's check them out again. Is there anyone new? No. This guy again is weakest and freeze and then drain from the furthest enemy two times. So it is better to keep them in the second. Otherwise, they're going to keep nuking them out like crazy. So let's go ahead and auto to see how we do. It seems like everything is going fine. So I'm going to go ahead and auto until we come across a new familiar or get to the end of the dungeon. All right. It seemed like a fairly easy lag to progress through so there was no problems there there's our rewards we weren't struggling at all honestly it was pretty easy let's check out this next one find and defeat altepec okay so we have ancient fragments we have a bubbling cauldron and 10k gold we now have mud as well go ahead and enter same team comp actually i was supposed to move a lattice but i'll go ahead and do that right now let's go ahead and put a lattice in the second slot I do recommend you having your bait in the second slot so far. Um, we still have these guys here, so you don't want them to be getting nuked out in the back and weakest. So it would be better if we have it like this. That way, Drazi can take a little bit of the hits for him, uh, which would just be their 1 SP. Seeing as their speed is fairly low, you won't be getting hit by that too much. They are more of a tanky familiar, but I still think this is the safest route. I'm going to go ahead and auto until I come across a new familiar or the boss familiar. What the wabba <laughs> wabba burns? Blub blub blub. I don't know what that said. Okay, we already know what he does. It's, it's pretty easy. You have nothing to worry about. But for that, you will want to have your bait in second slot just in case their attack closest to is nuking out your DPS. So I believe this is going to be the end of the dungeon right here. If not, we might have one or two more familiars. Yeah, there you go. So fairly, fairly easy flag. Um, nothing really to worry about. Let's go ahead and collect that and go on to the sixth flag, which is clear and tissue of all enemies. It's going to be a clear of all enemies, so it's going to be the same guys. There might be one new familiar, so we're going to have to be careful there. A lattice in second slot. Go and accept. And let's approach this carefully. Oh, there he is. Okay, let's check him out. He looks pretty cool. They are a water resistance. Okay, that is going to be a tanky kind of familiar. Heals weakest teammate and deals water damage to closest enemy and freeze. Now, they seem like some kind of speed bait. They do have defensive um, defensive stuff to heal themselves with, seeing as they probably are the lowest health, and they do have a lot of speed, so they are a kind of speed bait. They do come with 5% water resistance, and yeah, they don't seem too scary. Um, the freeze isn't the greatest thing in the world, to be honest, so there's really nothing to worry about. Bazako should be your last priority in every fight, in my opinion. 
So nothing to worry about there. We're going to go ahead and auto on through this. I'll see you at the end. All right, fairly, fairly easy flag. Now we'll be going on to the second dungeon, I believe. There's our rewards. Awesome. It's going to be navigate to Copa Cotil and defeat him. <laughs> okay. We're going to be getting two stat points and a hundred gems. Let's go ahead and check out the drops. We do have mud back. We have the Kimu Saba schematic along with the Sakura Gur and the Flambure schematic. And we have the same other drops as before as well. So we're going to go ahead and enter. Again, you can use your carries here. But if you are going to be using your familiars, I still do recommend tank, bait, DPS as the order you do things. I'm going to go ahead and accept. And I'm going to go ahead and auto on through this until I get to the boss. I'll see you there. Onions and chips. What brings you here? The pass to the forest is closed. Ah. You can't defy me. The power metal in my headphones is so loud it makes me invincible. He has like, no, oh, that was close. He has like no legs. He just has arms. That's pretty funny. He looks pretty cool. Go ahead and check him out. Copasatil? Copasatil? I don't know his name. But they look like a tankier familiar. They have 10%, oh no, sorry, DPS familiar. They have 10% water damage. They have deals water damage to closest enemy and freeze. Deals water damage to the closest enemy two times. Deals water damage to random enemy two times, which is very scary. And deals water damage to target enemy and freeze. Now, just reading these abilities, I can tell you right now that this is going to be your main priority if you are using a weaker set of carries or your familiars. So make sure you target them out first. I'm gonna go ahead and auto on through this and I'll see you at the end. It shouldn't be too hard of a dungeon, but good luck. All right, so we went ahead and cleared that. Let's go ahead and go down. And there's our two stat points and our 100 gems. That's amazing. Okay, let's check this out. Defeat all the enemies in Bonam Pack? Bonam Pack? We're going to be getting rune fragments, 50 of them, the average energy potion, and 10k gold. Let's go ahead and check out the chest here. There is no crazy schematics here, so it's not really the greatest place to get anything, just your cosmetics, and maybe if you're looking for them, some ancient tokens, which are going to be the enchants. We also have the sprockets and key, of course. Go ahead and enter. We're going to put a lattice in the back this time with Jurassic in the middle. Me up front, and let's accept. Okay, this area looks pretty cool and I love that guy's art style. So we have two newbies here. Let's check out the guy up front. Oko is going to deal fire damage to random enemy two times. They also have 5% fire damage. Deals fire damage to target enemy and combustion. Now that is honestly very, very strong for a common familiar. To have combustion on their kit is scary. They do have slower speed than anything else, so they are just a harder hitting DPS familiar. You shouldn't have to worry too much, but they do still have that in their kit, so be wary. And it is, again, a target enemy, so there is no hiding your DPS or your baits. Let's go ahead and check out this guy in the back, which is going to be Talatechi, Talateochi? I'm just going to call him Chi. Chi here does fire damage 7.5%. They deal fire damage to the weakest enemy and combustion. That's instantly targeting our Alatus. Now, Alatus is going to be getting nuked pretty hard because that's a lot of combustion with a lot, a lot of speed. We also have deals fire damage to the closest two enemies and deals fire damage to the closest enemy and to the furthest. So there is no hiding any of your familiars. If I'm going to be honest with you, you're going to want the less hitting attack be where you have your um your dps so i'd probably say put your dps in the back slot but it's still kind of risky because this guy covers the whole board he is definitely going to be the guy you focus right away and he will be attacking before anyone on my team other than jurassic i believe 
I believe, yeah, I'll be attacking before them and definitely before me. So Drazic does have a chance to take them out, but I have zero SP, so I have to be careful. I'm gonna go ahead and shield up. Go ahead and target him out very quickly. Target him out with a lattice. As you see here, I'm already getting pretty weak, so it's kind of scary. I might have to manual this dungeon. Good thing is I have heal power, so that's fine. I'm gonna zero SP these guys. They aren't a problem at all. I'm gonna keep shielding up with a lattice to make sure I have those the sustain going. Now, for this dungeon, I think I am going to manual the whole thing. This area is looking a little more dangerous. Here I can just zero SP across the board and not worry about anything. They are too dangerous in my opinion. Shield Razig. Okay. Good thing is we aren't using any SP and we are stacked already. You see here our lattice collects very quickly as well. Very, very nice. Again, target the back. Target the Lattice to target the back. Now for instances like this, you would want to use a damaging ability Lattice versus shields or heals. That way you can get out what the real problem is. Way. It's not always good to just heal time, so keep that in mind. Start shielding my guys up, because we are taking some damage here. Up. Kill the front end. Perfect. The heal. So I so I'm just going to go ahead and take them out. Real quick. We did lose a little bit of SP, but we do have some shields across the board. Not a crazy amount. Go ahead and take this guy out real quick. I believe if there's a team of, yeah, like three of these guys, you see how they attack me fairly quickly. It's very, very dangerous. These guys are very scary. Hoping they aren't going to be the boss from the one because if they are, it's going to be very, very risky. Let's go ahead and see what we can do here. They do have closest. Yeah, they have everything covered here. It's kind of scary. Should I heal them or should I deal damage? That's always the problem in this scenario. I could heal a lattice, but I don't want to lose five on them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and heal them. Heal again. Okay. I'm going to deal damage to the weaker one. And I do have my spread heal teammates, but just in case you guys don't have this, I will be using my kit, which is going to be my 3 SP heal teammates. And I went ahead and maxed out. I'm going to go ahead and throw shields on across the board, target out the weaker enemy. Nice, we were able to proc a brain, killing the guy in the back. Let's go ahead and shields. We might have also hit our, our dual strike. Sure. Either way, it took care of everything. Go ahead and zero SP. Nice. Okay, so that one was a little scary. As you saw, a lattice did get hit pretty hard. Go ahead and go on to this guy here. Okay, target out the back. Very, very nice. Keep building. Zero SP. Heal up Drazig. Shield. Zero SP. Shield. Zero SP. Zero SP. Zero SP. And looks like we got a dual strike empowered crit there, which was very nice. Go ahead and go on to our last familiar of the flag, and we'll take out the guys in the back. Nice. I'll go ahead and target him out just to get him real quick. Right in the back again. Nice. We were able to hit a dual strike and powered crit and probably some pet procs there. As you can see, it is very, very strong on Drazig, which is why I went the Drazig route. Go ahead and go to town. Now, that one was already fairly difficult, and we haven't even reached the eighth flag yet. So... Let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Oh my god. Okay, let's try this. So we're going to be getting Ancient Fragments. We're going to be getting Average Badge Pouch and 10k Gold. Anything different here. Uh, we do have Mud back, which is cool. Let's go ahead and enter. Same Team Comp, I believe. Was it Same Team Comp? Yeah, let's try Same Team Comp. Okay, let's go ahead and manual through this. This guy seems new. So this guy is going to be, yes, again, maybe a healer? Yes, a healer. So they heal closest, or sorry, deals fire damage to the closest, heals target teammate, and cleanse. That's very, very strong. 
for a rare from it. The cleanse is very, very nice. And shields teammate. Shields team. Have a lot of speed, so they're gonna be sustaining a lot. Um, I still think we should kill the the blue guys in the back first. They are more of a risk. Let's go ahead and do heals. Now let's do target and we'll target the guy in the back. Okay, I do think we should do heal. Zero SP, heals. We'll do zero SP here, and we'll do zero SP. Nice, okay. So even though we are getting hit pretty hard, I believe we have enough TS to just tank through it, and we are doing okay. But if they do hit too many of those, we will see our lattice getting popped, so we gotta be careful. Again, gotta target out the guys in the back. The blue guys are definitely the problem. Now, instead of healing here, I'm gonna take him out. Nice, we got the guy in the back. Nice, and this one I believe attacks furthest. I'm gonna do that. And now I'm just gonna zero SP shield, zero SP, zero SP shield, zero SP. I'm gonna go ahead and zero SP as well. Okay. Go ahead and continue here. Now, we seem to be doing fairly good. Doesn't seem like a problem, but we're not gonna find out till we get to the boss. That's where the real problem is going to show. Let's go ahead and take out the guy in the back. And we'll zero SP shield. I'm gonna try to see if we can save as much SP as possible. Be there. I'm gonna use zero SP, zero SP. Okay, so unfortunately we don't have too much SP stacked, so hopefully there's not a crazy amount of familiars in the way of this guy. Close to, oh no, this might take a lot of our SP. We gotta be careful here. In the back, nice. We got a pretty good proc there. Go ahead and shield up. Got the guy in the back again. The back and shield. Zero SP. So although we don't have too much SP stacked, we do have a decent amount of shields, which is fantastic. Go ahead and proceed, and I believe we are going to coming to boss after this guy. Hopefully, um, let's try to see if we can zero SP our way through this. We need to be fairly careful here since they do hit very hard. Trying to zero SP through it to save some SP. Nice, we were lucky enough to stack up a decent amount of SP. Okay, so let's see who's next. Okay, this is definitely the guy. I am very scared for this. I told you, I'm not an alien. Okay, and we're alive. Okay, we're alive. So these guys, thank God it's these guys. If it was the healer, I would have been so scared. So again, let's take a look. They do weakest enemy in combustion, closest to enemies, and to furthest enemy, um, or closest and furthest enemy. So that's very scary. We have to take him out right away. So you're gonna wanna use all of your targeting abilities to take him out as soon as possible. You do not wanna sustain here. You want to take him out just like that. And now we can go ahead and auto on through. And there you go, we got past lag eight. Awesome. I was very, very scared of that guy. I think that's everything. Yes. Okay, cool. I was honestly terrified of that. Well, let's go ahead and check out the next area, which is going to be clear of all enemies. That's amazing. We're going to be getting a ticket roll, which is great. We're going to be getting elemental fragments and 10k gold. Let's check out the chest, the boy mud, and the schematic. That is fine. We're going to go ahead and do the same layout. And seeing as we already know the familiars, I'm going to go ahead and auto on through this and I'll see you at the end. Okay, we went ahead and finished the ninth flag. And now we're proceeding to the very last part, which should be easy since it lets you use your carries. That's going to be push through the temple and defeat Inixk. You get three stat points along with 100 gems, which is fabulous. Let's check out the chest. Everything seems pretty similar, except this time you can farm mud. Let's go ahead and enter, and I'm going to be using the same layout with my same carries. I'm going to go ahead and auto on through, and I'll see you when we get to the boss. To pass through here, you must have imagination. To have imagination, first, you must die. Okay, that's a little edgy. Let's check them out real quick. They have fire resistance, which usually indicates a tank or bait. They have a lot of HP, very low health. So I'm guessing they're a tank. Shield self. 
Deals fire damage to the weakest enemy and combustion. Very cool looking ability. Deals fire damage and drain from strongest enemy two times. Deals fire damage to the closest enemy three times. Now that's pretty good. Unfortunately, the low speed doesn't really do that move any justice. If this was more of a DPS style familiar, that would be a great ability. But unfortunately, it's not. This guy seems pretty easy. You shouldn't have to worry about them too much. Um, but if they do get that one SP, that combustion to the weakest will hit pretty hard. So you've got to watch out. Um, I still recommend taking out the blue guy and then you could focus on them afterwards only because if there's a lot of the blue guys, they might be a problem. But since you are able to use your carries, you really should be steaming on by this. So do not worry about it, okay? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and auto on through this and I'll see you all at the end. Nice! And just like that, we are finally out of this tier. Oh my god. Goodbye, Ancient Odyssey. We're finally done. Deuces! Hello, South Peak. That's awesome. New adventures await you in South Peak. That's great! Oh, that's so exciting. We're finally done with this. And as you see here, if I click here, go to my mount, you'll see that I am now tier 14. Welcome to tier 14, guys. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up these stars here, and then I'll be right back with a little recap for everything in this tier. All right, and we were able to defeat all of the dungeons and get all three stars. We also were able to unlock this one here, which is clear the dungeon of all enemies, block chance reduced to zero, which we will not be able to do, unfortunately, right now, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and go on by showing you the drops. Invasion is going to be giving you... Going to be giving you, as you can see here, tier 14 stuff already. You can go ahead and start farming that. Tier 14 this is going to be some of the cool looking legendaries that tier 14 has to offer. Go ahead and go on to Gauntlet. Check those out as well. And as you can see here, we have some tier 14 mythics along with the tier 14 set, which in my opinion is one of the best DPS sets in the game. I love this set. If you are a DPS player, I highly recommend going for this set. It is amazing. Let's go ahead and go on to world boss. Now, no more nether. As you see here, there is no more nether. I know. So hopefully you guys finished your Drazig or got close to it. Otherwise, you're going to have to come back and finish it while you're in tier 14. Or lag is over and done with as well. Tier 12. There is no more Melvin Factory. No more Exterm, I believe. I don't believe Exterm goes past 11. Yep, no Exterm. No Brimstone. Now Titan's Attack is going to be what I'm going to start farming. Titan's Attack is going to be my main area. Let's go ahead and see the drops. It's going to come with one of the best, if not the best, main hand in the game, which is going to be the Quetzal War Shield. Now, it does have deflect chance for the bonus, but I promise you the skills on this are phenomenal. So, this is something I might go for. Still not sure, but this is a very great option. We also have this Mythic here, which is going to be gain damage reduction. The lower your health percentage is, up to a maximum of 10%. Now, I don't personally like this. I still might go for Quetzal War Shield, but it's not going to be on my main to-do list. If I get it, fantastic. If not, oh well. So, we have Pinions, of course. We have three Mythic Schematics. Go ahead and check them out. We have Thunmolf, which we will not be going for. Ven Vedalumbus, Vedalumbus, which we will not be going for either. But we do have Tethius Schematic, which we are going to be go for, uh, going for. Tethius is going to be the Mythic Familiar that we will be crafting first we might be crafting multiple in this let's play but for sure we are going to be crafting tethius because in my opinion and this is definitely my opinion tethius is the strongest familiar in the game um and i honestly just believe that because they are just so viable they're so useful they have such a great kit everything about them is amazing so i am definitely going to be going for tethius and i highly recommend you guys go for them as well if you guys could start this in tier 11 go for it go for it trust me now the set here is one of the best tank sets in this tier i believe 
I mean, around this time, it's going to come with Team Enrage if you're in the front, which I usually am, 20% uh, water resistance, but deal less damage by 10%, and 25 water resistance while below 70% health, plus 20% uh, percent block chance. So, as you can see here, it's a lot of water resistance. Now, the reason why I want this is because I'm going to be farming Titans a lot, and water resistance is what you need for Titans. So I'm very, very excited to be going for this. I might be going for this set. It's still a maybe. Now we do have another world boss, which is going to be the Ignited Abyss. And I believe this is the last one for the tier. Go and check it out. And Ignited Abyss honestly does not have the greatest set, but we'll go ahead and go to the Mythics first. For the Mythics, it has 10% chance to gain one SP uh, per turn, which I do not like. In my opinion, it's very bad. Let's check out this Mythic Body, which is 15% chance to give Enrage to random teammate per turn. If it wasn't per turn, I would like it, but unfortunately it is per turn. I do not see this giving any use to any free to players or even most pay to players in that fact. I honestly recommend avoiding both these Mythics unless you're going for the Mythic Cosmetic on the body. The Pinion, of course, we have the Hunaku Schematic and we also have the Zordon Gone schematic, which we will not be going for. Now for the set, we do have the Elu Eluia, Eluia, whatever the set's called. Um, it, it gives uh, team damage, 10% healing bonus to all teammates, bolster, which is spread shield for 333 when you hit, and 10% chance to revitalize 10 for 15% fire resistance. In my opinion, this set is just all over the place. It's not solid at all. I do not recommend it. But, however, if you are looking for a DPS familiar and you did not craft Drazig, let's say you still have Omo and you really don't want to farm Nether anymore, I highly recommend going for this schematic right here, which is Panguita. But the thing is, you're going to have to pick between doing either Titans or, um, or doing um, the Ignited Abyss because you're going to be farming for a lot of world boss materials to make Panguita. So it really depends if you want to focus Tethius for a tank or if you want to focus Panguita for a killer DPS. So it's really up to you on what you want to do. They both are very, very strong. One, of course, is easier to make than the other. Don't get me wrong. But if you guys are lacking a tank, I promise you, you do not want to skip on making a tank. A tank is one of the biggest parts of your team and a lot of people sleep on tanks. So just be wary. Um, it is a decision you guys are going to have to make on your own. I personally have Drazig and plan to make another DPS later on in the future. Kind of soon, but it's going to be after Tevia since I already have DPS covered along with heals as well. So that's going to be it for world boss drops. Now let's go ahead and go on to the raid drops. Goodbye Storm. Hello Tikal Diki. Defeat Kakunapak and collect his legendary gear. I'm sorry, I'm really bad with these words. This guy up here looks really goofy, I like. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and go to summon. You dare challenge the pass of Tati Kaldiki? And none have survived. <laughs> okay, so of course, I only recommend Heroic to take advantage of the 400% item find and the 150% capture rate. Go ahead and check out the drops. For the drops, you have these two mythics which are going to be Quetzal Sorrow. It's going to give you 4% earth resistance, 4% fire damage, 5% life steal. I do not recommend that for anybody. Life steal is total garbage right now. Um, Quetzal Gift, which is going to be 4% earth resistance, 4% fire damage, and 5% evade if you have the lowest health of your team. Now, 5% really isn't a crazy amount, and we're not really revolving around evade. I don't believe the set revolves around evade either, so I don't know why that's a part of the mythic bonus, but whatever. I don't recommend it. If you want it for cosmetics, go for it. It looks sick. But other than that, I highly recommend avoiding it. We have mythic curios, of course, which everybody loves. We have three mythic schematics, which is going to be Lady Spark and Schematic, a very, very great supporty type of healer familiar from t17 i believe we will not be making them unfortunately they do require a little too much and they aren't really needed in the team comp but they are nice um it's entirely up to you if you want to go for this familiar but you cannot do anything about it until t17 really so i highly recommend just avoiding the schematic for now it's not needed 
Um, we have the Kimu Saba schematic, a very fantastic familiar. Unfortunately, we won't be going for them. We are going for Tethius. And we have the Hunaku schematic, another familiar we are not going to be going for. Now for the set, we do have the Supei set. In my opinion, is not the greatest set at all. It is kind of a very disappointing set. The only thing I like about it is the four out of four bonus, which still is not the greatest. So it says teammates in front of you gain 5% earth resistance. When you get hit, gain 3% earth resistance up to 15% and plus 20% block, 25% barrier if you have the lowest health on your team. So this is pretty much going to be a bait barrier type of set. And in my opinion, it's not that strong at all. It's actually fairly weak. 20% block is really the only thing here that you're benefiting from other than the barrier, but you have nothing else going for you the barrier is not the greatest in the world and i honestly recommend avoiding this set unless it's the only option you have going this i promise you will not be good for you because it does not give you enough defenses as a bait so try to avoid it if possible yes i know the cosmetics are great but that's about it let's go ahead and check out the legendary schematics we have kakulak schematic we have sakura Guru schematic and we have uh chick Chen Chichen schematic. Um, none of those are really uh, worth going for. So here you're mainly just going to be farming legendaries and pretty much a bunch of stuff to use to upgrade other gear that you find in probably world boss or gauntlet. I highly recommend avoiding the set in this area. Let's go ahead and check out the familiars before we go ahead and finish this off. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off auto and we're going to manual this till we see all the familiars in the boss. So for the first two familiars we have in Inti, which is going to be a, looks like a DPS type of thing here. They deal earth damage to furthest and closest enemy, oxidize the enemy and shield, or oxidize the enemy shield and earth damage target enemy for so and so damage. That's a very strange attack. Um, I'll go ahead and go over the amplifiers and boosters in a separate video if you guys are curious. But for now, that just, um, just understand that it is a um, shield affecting and target damage type of ability. Deals earth damage to the weakest and strongest enemy. Deals earth damage to the closest three times. Now that one hits pretty hard, but the speed is pretty low, so no need to worry about this guy here. I'm going to check out this guy in the back here, which is 10% earth resistance. I'm surprised they're in the back since they seem more more like a tank than the other one. Deals earth damage and drain from the closest. Heals self two times. Deals earth damage to weakest enemy two times. And deals earth damage to closest three enemies. Very, very slow. Very sustainy. Has resistance. Seems like a tank. Go ahead and auto on through these guys. So far, you don't have to worry about any of those, in my opinion. Maybe the oxidized familiar so far, but the one in back was not a problem. Go ahead and see if there's any new familiars here. Okay, let's continue on. Oh, I see one of the new ones up there. Is he on this team? No, he's not. We're about to see him right now. Check him out. Turn off auto. And here he is up front. They have earth resistance and they have a lot of sustain. So it seems like another tank or bait. Deals earth damage to closest to enemies and drain. Very sustaining, very cool looking ability. Heals self, shield self, and deals earth damage to target enemy two times. Very low speed. So far it seems like the only one you might have to worry about will be Inti. But in my opinion, this should be a very, very easy raid. Let's go ahead and auto on through this until we get to the boss. Ufa! Did you bring tortillas? Did you bring me my guacamole? No? Well, go get it before I sweep the floor with your head. Very, very aggressive. He seems very hungry. Let's check him out. Okay. So they have earth damage, indicating that they are either a healer or DPS. It shows here earth damage to weakest enemy, which is very, very strong. They are a bait destroyer. Red heal teammates, which is fairly gnarly. It doesn't seem like they have an animation here, unfortunately. Heals target teammate two times. No animation as well. 
deals earth damage to furthest enemy two times, which is pretty cool. That's actually a pretty gnarly attack. And spread shield teammates. So they kind of are like a healer um, slash DPS. They do have a mad amount of speed. So if you are having issues with this raid for some reason, they are going to be your indefinite target. You're going to want to focus them more than anyone else. Followed by that, you would want to target NT afterwards as your secondary, and then the rest really don't matter. I'm going to go ahead and auto on through this, and I'll see you at the end. Alright, so that was pretty much going to be the introduction for Tier 14 and the end of Tier 13. Thank you so much guys for being patient. I know I did take a while on this video, but I do promise once I am finished with Lattice, things should speed up a whole lot more. I was just trying to make sure that I finished a Lattice, but now that that's out of the way, everything will be good to go. I've been wasting a lot of raid shards trying to go back to the old raid to get the materials for him, which is why I couldn't progress as fast. But once a Lattice is out of the way again, it will be a faster transition, but I do have at least a one month period between each of the tiers before I actually release these videos. So please be patient with me. I'm so glad you guys were patient with me to begin with. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you guys have any tips for anyone, leave them in the comments below as well. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is World Eater. Have a great one, guys. Peace.